Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I will be sharing the top five books of 2021. I'm so excited for this video. I feel like I'm speaking for the majority of booktube when I say that these are the most anticipated videos of the entire year because I don't know about you but I personally get a lot of recommendations out of watching other people's top 2021 books um, and top books of the year and just like to see all the books that I missed out on because unfortunately I cannot read everything that comes out in the year so I just want to see like what's high priority for next year. So these books are my top five books of the year and it was super hard to to choose some of these just because I honestly had a really great reading year. I feel like everything that I read was either four stars uh, and up um, with an average rating of like 4.5 stars. So it was really hard to choose some of these books but I would definitely say that these are the books that have left the most impact on me and books that I like continuously recommend and I feel so, I feel like a broken record recommending these books to my friends. Um, so yeah without further ado these aren't in order except for the first one. But these are my top five books of 2021. Okay, we're starting out real strong with this first one. This is my top book of the year and honestly just one of my favorite books of all time. And it is Gear Breakers by Zoe Hana Makuta. I don't know why people aren't talking about this more. I feel like this book has just not been popping off on Instagram and Bookstagram like I've seen it or Book Talk. But I feel like it's a book that is so good. It's like one that I didn't expect to be so good just because I don't read sci-fi and dystopia. But I feel like it checks off all the boxes of a lot of YA readers. So this book I found through this like list of up and coming emerging Asian American debut authors and I took a chance on it because the cover looked honest, the cover was what really bought me. But if you know me, I don't really read sci-fi and dystopia. I feel like I like got rid of those genres when I started booktube and I read a ton of that and I just got super like sick of it to be honest and also I don't read a lot YA anymore but this book I took a chance on because of the beautiful cover and I'm so glad I did because it is just one of the books that have stuck with me now and I'm honestly just gonna reread it every year because I need to like relive these action scenes. So Gear Breakers basically follows Sona and Eris. It is in dual perspective as they are on opposite sides of this war and they meet and discover that they actually have a common enemy that they're trying to fight um, and it's super interesting it's definitely very humans versus technology so the two warring factions is one of them is like these uh, people who think they're like gods so they've like mechanized and like tech basically turned everything into like weapons and then there is the rebel faction who believes that like humanity needs to be saved and they need to diverge away from this technology. Super interesting storytelling where I think really introspective ideas about playing God and like what does God really mean and like what about this technology is so bad. Like I think this is just like portraying our future to be honest. But I think my favorite thing about this book is honestly that because it is so sci-fi-y and so technology, a reader can really get discouraged, especially someone like me who doesn't read this genre often, but a reader can get really discouraged because they fear that the technology will go over their head. But I would say that this book does such a good job at that because the author really knows what they're doing. Um, so basically you kind of enter this technology and this world through the lens of a romance. So you're just basically learning along with the main characters as you learn more about this world, uncover secrets, and kind of dig out this technology together with the characters. So I really enjoyed that and for that factor it made understanding the technology and this world building a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable. Steamy sapphic romance with mecha fighting machines and I don't know what else you could ask for. This book just does so well in the romance department but also in the fighting scenes that were super well described and super action-packed. Like I could feel my adrenaline running and I was genuinely worried for the character's well-being. Um, I would definitely recommend reading this book if have you guys watched that new show on Netflix called Arcane. I recently became obsessed with it because I got into it from my partner and I love that show. It's like a League of Legends show on Netflix and I would definitely recommend recommend this book if you've watched the show and really enjoyed that because this book is kind of is very similar honestly in the plot but also the way it's written and kind of like the action scenes I feel like it's very similar so yeah best book of 2021 
please write it down somewhere, screen cap this vid because this book you cannot miss out on. Okay, so this next book I'm not going to talk too much about because I feel like a broken record. I've talked about this book on many occasions on my Instagram and I have ranted about it, not ranted, but I have gushed about it on booktube as well in a lot of videos, and that is Days of Distraction by Alexandra Chang. Is anyone surprised? Not really. This book is following an Asian American woman as she is navigating this huge move to a new city and she's kind of reevaluating her life, her relationships, her career, and her family history. Uh, I think the best part about this book for me was that it mirrored so much of my own life that I have a very personal connection to it and I feel like this is a story, this is someone telling my story essentially, which is why I think it hit me so hard. Obviously that's not going to be the case for everyone, but I do still think that this book is worth something. If you're looking for a very uniquely formatted book with a very unique storytelling aspect, it kind of doesn't really have a plot, which I think honestly made for a no stress reading experience because I wasn't worried about, oh, is this plot resolved? Where's the climax of the story? Because I was just following this main character on her move and her like discovering of herself. So it was just really no stress. It was a simple read and I honestly learned a lot about myself in the process and just about character relationships. Um, so I would highly recommend this book if you're looking for an introspective read that will teach you something about, I guess, the world and is written in a very unique way that's unlike anything you've ever read, I would definitely recommend Days of Distraction. The next book we have here is Fantasy. I know, I did not think I would read so much fantasy this year and I'm really glad. I am just so glad that I read a lot of these fantasy books because I honestly would have been missing out. The next book we have is Black Sun by Rebecca Rowanhorse. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I cannot shut up about this book and I recommend it to everyone and just every person who needs a recommendation. I don't care if you don't read fantasy because I don't read fantasy. You have to read this book. Like this book is the most well done in terms of world building, such a steamy slow burn romance that it's honestly just kind of frustrating. I feel like it's like Avatar The Last Airbender in terms of romance that it's so slow burn and you're just like, hurry up. But this book really does so well in that department and also like I said, the world building, the magic system. This fantasy also I think uniquely um, has a lot of political intrigue that is kind of hard to get the grasp of in the beginning but by the end of the book you're pretty satisfied where everything is and honestly you're just waiting for the second book like me like you're just like I need the second book right now. I feel like this book is just doing a lot in the fantasy genre that I'm really proud to see. There is LGBT plus representation, the use of neo pronouns and indigenous rep representation and the story is just so beautiful and lush that you're inspired to read more books featuring all these diverse representation. Um, and I really love this book for that. I love that it's like making strides in the um, fantasy genre. Oops, I burped. But again, if you're looking for a book with a very vivid world and diverse representation with a really interesting magic system, um, kind of a blylent, bl bloody, blood, blylent, kind of bloody and violent, but honestly, I would still recommend checking out this book uh, because it's the action scenes are pretty lit. They're honestly pretty cool. Um, I would recommend reading Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. So to do a complete 180, the next book that I have to talk about is a romance book. And this year I actually read a lot of romance. I think just because romance was kind of everywhere this year. It was like popping off on TikTok. I was getting so many wrecks. Um, and The Love Hypothesis was one of my favorite romances of this year. I just feel like I not only connected to it on a personal level, but I really appreciated the story, the plot, and the character characters. A lot of people might argue that the main character is annoying, but I am the main character, so I cannot find her annoying. So our book follows our main character, Olive, who is a third year PhD candidate um, who decides to embark on this fake dating scheme um, with, I think, a professor there or like a PI um, to convince her best friend that she is over her ex because her best friend is interested in her ex. I thought the plot was a little convoluted and a little complicated, but to be honest, I wasn't really reading the book for the plot. I was reading the book because it did something really interesting that I think needs to kind of be more featured in books, which is the idea of this academic setting.
setting and talking about the social hierarchy and the culture of these academic settings and their place for like women and women of color. This book takes place in a lab setting. I believe the main character um, researches some type of like, I forgot what it was, damn it, but she, re she does a lot of research and she's in this lab and she is trying to figure out this question and I love how the chapter headings have like hypotheses at the top. I thought that was really cool and really immersed you into this like storytelling of reading as this like researcher and scientist. I thought that was really cool. But another thing I really loved about this book is that it really goes in deep to the culture of a lab setting and some of the things that are like problematic in the lab setting. Like I think it really good, does a really good job of like roasting um, these lab settings for things that they're not doing well, like the rampant sexism or racism and just the social hierarchy and misogyny. Like I feel like this book touches it all and it's not something that I have read a lot in a lot of like adult books or a lot of like romance books to begin with. If you're looking for a rom-com with a lot of depth and for some insight on the academic setting of like labs and research, I would highly recommend this book. Okay, and the last book I have in this favorites video is one that I read at the beginning of the year and I'm kind of cheating a little bit because it's actually a series and not just a book, but it is the Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. Now I'm not going to talk too much about this just because I feel like I've talked about it a lot since I read it at the beginning of the year and I featured it in a lot of wrap-up videos and I feel like everyone has read this series and I'm just kind of late to the game but I, like I said in the other videos, I'm someone who came into this series as not a very well-read fantasy reader, reader, but I wanted something a little more challenging, something a little bit more advanced to bring me into this genre, and I feel like if you read, after you read this book, you can honestly read any fantasy book there is out there, because it's just so, it's kind of complex, makes your brain work a little bit. I feel like some books I desire this no-stress reading experience, but then in other books I really want to work my brain over what's going on and thinking of theory like I was just like theorizing through this entire trilogy and while it was very exhausting I enjoyed the experience of doing that and talking to the large community of readers who absolutely love this book and have talked about it and have had discussions about it. Um, it brings a really unique world I think and it has this really interesting question of like what does the end of the world look like because this world that they experience has experienced a lot of like apocalyptic disasters. Um, I feel like I shouldn't tell you synopsis. I say that every time I recommend this book to someone. I'm not going to tell you what it's about because I feel like you should go into this book not expecting anything or just going into it kind of blind because if I tell you what it's about, the beginning of the story is a little confusing anyway. So if I tell you and you have expectations, then you read the beginning and you're like, I'm confused. That's totally understandable. Like, I was confused in the beginning as well and I feel like you never really get answers until the end of the trilogy anyway, but I swear me reading the last book of this trilogy was the most satisfying experience of my entire life. Like, I don't think I've ever experienced anything more satisfying than wrapping up this trilogy and finally getting the answers that I had questioned in book one and it is just so satisfying and beautiful to see that kind of come together in a way that is, um, just very nice for you to read about these characters who you've been rooting for all series long and after this honestly N.K. Jemisin has cemented has been cemented as one of my auto buy authors. I bought um, their new book recently but I am just obsessed with everything that they write and I want to get into more fantasy books and I feel like after reading this book it actually inspired me to read books like Black Sun and a lot of challenging high fantasy books that I honestly normally would not pick up had it not been from this reading experience and I told my partner to read it, I forced my partner to read it and we are both kind of like Broken Earth Trilogy fans and we keep talking about it from time to time because there's just so much to kind of mull over. Um, like I said, if you're looking for a very unique fantasy book and you have not read this book yet, I would definitely recommend picking it up. So that's a little bittersweet. I am filming this on like December 30th. Um, so it's kind of bittersweet because we're ending the year off and I'm really glad that I was able to end on a really positive note of my favorite books of this year. I hope you have some recommendations from this um, video and I would definitely love if you left your top five books or just favorite books of this year because I love hearing your recommendations and I just love learning about books that I missed. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great, happy new year, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.